go live now to Vilnius, uh, where the NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg is giving a press conference alongside Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Let's listen. And strength of the NATO alliance. NATO will continue to stand with you for as long as it takes. NATO allies have provided tens of billions of dollars in support over the past year. And now we have agreed a three-part package bringing Ukraine closer to NATO. A multi-year program of practical assistance, establishing a new NATO-Ukraine Council, and reaffirming that Ukraine will become a member of NATO and removing the requirement for the membership action plan. Our new multi-year program of assistance for Ukraine will help you transition from Soviet era to NATO equipment and standards and will make Ukraine's forces fully interoperable with NATO. The inaugural meeting of the NATO-Ukraine Council will start in a few minutes. This is a forum where Ukraine and NATO allies will meet as equals, hold crisis consultations, and jointly take decisions. Ukraine is now closer to NATO than ever before. Allies reaffirmed that Ukraine will become a member of the alliance and agreed to remove the requirement for a membership action plan. This will change Ukraine's membership path from a two-step process to a one-step process. And we will issue an invitation for Ukraine to join NATO when allies agree that conditions are met. This is a strong, united message from allies on your path to NATO membership. We must ensure that when this war ends, there are credible arrangements in place for Ukraine's security, so that history does not repeat itself. I therefore welcome that many allies will today commit to providing long-term security assistance to Ukraine. This will help deter any future aggression from Russia after this war ends and it uh, complements the support provided by NATO. The decisions made here in Vilnius mark the beginning of a new chapter in the relationship between NATO and Ukraine. Today, we meet as equals. I look forward to the day we meet as allies. And again, a very warm welcome to you, please. Love you. Thank you so much. Shanovni Jensen, Pane General Secretary Jensen, I will speak Ukrainian if it's possible, okay? Shanovni Prisutnia, Shanovni Journalist, I'm glad to see such a attention to our summit and such an expectation of news, good news. Security is uh, something that is obviously lacking right now, and our cooperation here in NATO of all partners is something that will definitely fill the security deficit. Ukraine is already and will always be a contributor to our common security. Security is our key objective for the NATO summit, for all the meetings, and for all of our communications. First, I would like to welcome the extension of the mandate of Mr. Secretary General for another year, and uh, I thank you, Jens, for your support. I highly appreciate this. Thank you. Second, we have now discussed in detail the situation regarding the confrontation with Russia, what we are doing for the sake of peace and security, and what we can still do to give more protection to our people. This primarily concerns the security and defense assistance from our partners and 
I'd like to say that we have some positive news on the new packages of defense support coming from our partners. And here in the summit, we already have a number of meetings, we have a number of arrangements, and I'm grateful to all those leaders who offered these packages of support to us. Thirdly, we discussed the expectations of a NATO summit. Now, it's important that Ukraine will not need a membership action plan on its way to NATO, and I would like to extend words of gratitude to you, Jens, for these important steps. I know how many conversations or arrangements were to be made for such an event. We have uh, taken a long path in uh, interoperability with NATO, and our soldiers have a good expo expertise in cooperation with NATO, and uh, they have proven they can well use the weapons, and they prove that the global democracy is far stronger than the terrorist attacks and terrorist threats. And even during the full-scale war against Russia, Ukraine continues to conduct reform. And in the uh, process of our EU integration, we have clearly outlined what do we need to do, and we're doing that. Therefore, we highly appreciate the recognition that uh, Ukraine will not need a membership action plan on its way to NATO. I would like to have a success on this summit for everyone, for our our soldiers, for our citizens, for our children, for everyone, and particularly the security guarantees that are so important for the people. The security guarantees for Ukraine on our way to NATO, not in state of NATO, but as security guarantees on our way to integration. And uh, today, these guarantees uh, could be confirmed by the G7 countries, and if this will happen, and we'll be working on that, this will surely become a very important and specific success. We can state that the results of the summit are good, but should we receive an invitation, they would be the, the optimum. And I would like to extend words of gratitude to Lithuania, not just for this summit and for the energy uh, that this uh, summit is full of. We can see all those flags on the street. This is the human relations, not an artificial one. I'd like to extend words of gratitude for this. This is exactly the support for us and the energy for us, as we're not in NATO yet, but this is already the reality. This is our protection. This is the great support coming from the societies of around the world. And I thank you for this. I think this is the most important. This is the faith in Ukraine as a future fully-fledged member to the alliance and a faith to Ukraine as a guarantor of security and a faith in Ukraine as a victorious party in this war for the freedom, for the values of Ukraine. Once again, thank you. Glory to Ukraine. Ukrainian national broadcaster. Lady over there. Thank you. My uh, opinion. I have a question for uh, both uh, Secretary General and uh, President Zelensky. First of all, Pana President, how do you evaluate the formulation of the Ukraine? Dear Mr. President, how do you evaluate the, the conditions with regarding to our status of Ukraine? And what are you going to talk about today during the Council? What's the difference from the uh, Commission? And Thank you for this question. First and foremost, the, the assessments, I've already made my assessment in a fairly public manner. What's Im most important is to have results. We can, we can see some specific points making us closer to NATO. As I've already said, that some of the things, it's difficult to explain to partners because we are at war and the partners are truly willing us to help and assist. They are helping us, but 
still we are living under different conditions because we are in the conditions where survival matters and the partners are willing to support us to leave. But before we can leave, we need to survive. And that pushes us to some fast processes, the processes that would need to result in the reform of the infrastructure of security in the world. And unfortunately, we're paying the ultimate price, the price of our lives. We can see how to fight any aggression. Now, we are inadequate people. We clearly understand that partners are helping us with weapons, and this is a moment of survival. This is something that we need. We understand that someone is afraid of talking about our membership now, because nobody is willing to have a world war, and w which is logical and understandable. I want everyone to understand that we are a civilized and adequate people. Ukraine is fighting, and it truly understands that Ukraine cannot be a member nation to NATO as long as the war continues in our territory. This is absolutely clear, but those signals are important. Those signals that would have mentioned in bilateral meetings with Secretary General, with partners, and I uh, had a number of meetings already, uh, those statements about Ukraine uh, becoming a member nation of NATO, and already we can hear some confident statements when the conditions will be met. My understanding is that when it will be secure on our land, on our territory. The establishment of the uh, NATO Ukraine Council is one of the three elements in the package we agreed today to ensure that uh, Ukraine comes even closer to NATO and to NATO membership. And the purpose of that decision is to strengthen the political ties, is to strengthen the political uh, interaction between uh, NATO and uh, Ukraine. Uh, the Council uh, uh, is different from the previous uh, Commission. Uh, first and foremost, because this is a body that can make decisions and we meet as equals. It's not uh, 31 allies meeting a partner, it's, it's a council that actually make decisions where we meet as equals. We can meet at, uh, the, at the level of heads of state and government, as we will do today, at the ministerial level, defense foreign ministers, uh, ambassadorial level. We can also meet at the military level uh, with our chief of defense and other uh, experts groups can be established. So this is a much stronger, much more important political uh, uh, entity uh, than to just have a partnership. This is something we do together as equals. But again, this is one of the steps we are taking uh, to move towards uh, a membership. Uh, today we meet as equals. I look forward to today we meet as allies. Uh, but this is an important step and an important contribution to that, uh, to that uh, process. Okay. Uh, Sky, first row here. Thank you. I'm Deborah Haynes from Sky News. President Zelensky, you came here wanting a time frame for membership. You'll be leaving with warm words as well as more weapons and new security guarantees. Have the Allies done enough to show their support? Or do you still think that their position on Ukraine joining NATO is absurd? And most crucially, might this lack of an invitation undermine the morale of your forces fighting right now on the front line? And, um, Mr. Secretary General, the Kremlin has just said it would be, or the Kremlin has just said it's a dangerous mistake for the West to give security guarantees to Ukraine. Are you worried that? the Allies are taking a step closer towards direct war with Russia. Thank you for the question. As for the invitation, I truly understand that this is a technical signal. But if we're not only dealing with techniques and bureaucracy, but should we look at that as a serious factor to contribute the motivation to the Ukrainian society, then for me, 
as a president. That was a, an important moment. I kind of compared this fact with the uh, candidacy for the membership in the European Union and um, in, with the dialogue with other countries. I give the following example. I told that EU candidacy was just this, this signal. The candidacy means no membership, but it brings a significant mobilization for Ukraine and a powerful signal for Russia that Ukraine is not a member of any type of alliance, but Ukraine is willing to become a member of the European Union and will be an independent state. As for the invitation to NATO, this is just the same. It's a signal. But today, I can see another important signal that I've already mentioned, and we can have some specifics about this. The specifics now, if today the G7 will agree to the first uh, declaration on security guarantees, that would be a very specific fact, because the security guarantees says that these guarantees will be valid on our way to NATO. This is very important. This is going to be a very specific signal. As for the rest of the points, the Secretary General has already mentioned as uh, referred to your alliance. Thank you. There is a full-fledged war going on in Europe, and there is no risk-free option, uh, no risk-free option for NATO allies either. But the biggest risk is if President Putin wins. Because then the message is that when he used military force, when he violates international law, when he invades a neighbor, then he gets what he, went, uh, what, what he wants. And that's exactly why it is so important for NATO allies to support Ukraine. Uh, because it will, it will be a tragedy for Ukraine if President Putin wins, but it will be dangerous for us. It will make us more vulnerable. And that's also the reason why we have been so very clear on the following, that Ukraine, of course, has the right to choose its own path and what kind of security arrangements it wants to be part of. That's the first line in the paragraph we agree uh, today on membership uh, for Ukraine and the path forward. Uh, and this is a fundamental right for every nation, and therefore we can never allow that Moscow starts to decide who can or who cannot be a member of a NATO. Russia has been against every enlargement of NATO. It's for NATO allies and for Ukraine to decide when to become a member. Moscow doesn't have a veto on that. So we are moving uh, Ukraine closer to membership. We make all the, the, the decisions today, which is the strongest, the most united message on the path towards membership NATO has ever issued to Ukraine. And of course, you do that knowing that Moscow will, will protest, as they did when Finland joined, or when Sweden is joining, or North Macedonia, or all new uh, allies. So, so Ukraine has the right to choose some path. Allies uh, will decide. It's not for Moscow to decide. Uh, just, just to add one, one, one sentence to the words of Secretary General, yeah. that, that what is very important about the Council, that it's uh, not instrument of participation that is written there, that is the instrument of integration. And that's also give us such spirit that will be in NATO. ICTV Ukraine. <clears throat> I have two questions. Uh, Volodymyr Runets, ICTV. I have two questions, one for the President of Ukraine and one for the Secretary General uh, of NATO. Uh, Mr. President, what do you expect of today's meeting of the G7? What guarantees do you think might be additionally granted to Ukraine? Uh, this new council NATO Ukraine how is it going to be different from uh, the commission NATO, NATO Ukraine that could be blocked by say Hungary or any other members that, and had issues functioning how technically can be how this can be technically achieved thank you um, 
As for uh, today's meeting, as well as the security guarantees, first I would like to tell you that these are not auxiliary aspects. We don't have real security guarantees from our partners. I mean, legally, we have actual security guarantees. There's financial, there's guarantees in the form of sanctions, uh, there's uh, assistance and defensive support. And that could be the first legal document that symbolizes the fact that we have a, a, a sort of a security umbrella, a first document. And later on, Ukraine will have uh, uh, bilateral documents with every uh, security guarantor for Ukraine. And it will cover all those aspects that we already have or those aspects that we are lacking now, like air defense, like aircrafts, like military aircrafts. Now, all those aspects will be uh, considered on a bilateral level. Besides, this uh, document, the security umbrella, will allow the other countries, in addition to day seven countries, to join. So this is, would be an opportunity for other partners to join as well. And we've already started to have conversations with other partners that are already friends with us, but they're not part of the G7, but they will uh, join. I think that's a very important next step. Well, the Council uh, will be shared by me, the Secretary General of uh, NATO, and I can convene uh, the, the Council. Uh, so that cannot be blocked by individual uh, uh, allies or members of the uh, Council. It can also be convened by individual member states for uh, crisis uh, consultations. So if uh, President Zelensky wants to convene uh, a meeting of the uh, NATO-Ukraine Council, he can do so. It cannot be blocked. Because we are meeting as equals, we have decided what we are going to address, including uh, crisis consultations, can be uh, called by any member of this council. So this is something new, it's something different, it's a strong political tool, tool for further political integration and also for decision making. So this is one of the elements in the decision we are taking today. To, to move Ukraine closer to NATO and NATO membership, and you should all appreciate that. CNBC, just behind you. Um, Steve Sedgwick from CNBC, sir. Uh, President Zelensky, can I just follow on on the security guarantees issue? Because security guarantees have been in place for the best part of the last 30 years. They didn't prevent 2014 in Crimea. They didn't prevent 2022. What is it about security guarantees that will make a difference this time, firstly to yourself, sir, and your country, but also to the attitude of the Russians and to Vladimir Putin? He's looked at previous security guarantees, and he's ignored them, and he's invaded anyway. Thank you for the question. I'm not willing to reiterate, but I can tell you one thing. I don't believe a Budapest Memorandum as security guarantee, because I don't understand any responsibility provided under the memorandum. There were no specifics except for the fact that Ukraine had this document and was left alone with it. We don't see uh, the consequences for violating this document. As for the new document, now, it should remain valid as long as Ukraine is not in NATO. And we understand that the best guarantees for Ukraine and for Ukrainians is to be in NATO. This is clear because there's already the examples. And I would like to underline once again, we don't see an, uh, any member nations of NATO that are at war now, that are dying that are suffering, that are defending their own country. That is why we understand that the best guarantees for Ukraine is to be in NATO. On our way to NATO, we would like to have the security guarantees and to have them permanently 
so that they would make um, our relationship to other countries even more powerful. We would like to have a document so that um, the assistance wouldn't be based only on our personal relationship, but to have it written in the document. And uh, today's framework declaration and uh, security guarantees will open up the possibilities for the strong bilateral documents. We'll take one last question, USA Today, lady here, second row. Later this afternoon, you'll meet with President Biden. What are you hoping to accomplish in the meeting, and how do you plan to convince him that Ukraine is ready for NATO membership? When you meet with President Biden, also, beyond the cluster munitions that the U.S. has said it will provide Ukraine, what other military assistance are you seeking from the Biden administration that have, you have not yet received? And for Secretary General, General Stoltenberg, how quickly do you expect NATO nations to be able to provide the F-16s that President Zelensky has been requesting? Uh, about F-16, uh, also to, to me, you address to me a question, or yes. to you? F-16, no, 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 no answer, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, you, get, you can also uh, yes, answer on, on all these three uh, questions about NATO, when, when it will be, and it. Okay. Uh, uh, Thank you. First, I'm grateful to President Biden and to the Congress and to the people of the United States that are truly the leaders in uh, support and assistance to Ukraine. We highly appreciate this. I'm not uh, planning to find any arguments uh, for uh, making sure that President Biden would see us in the NATO. I believe that those arguments, they should be mutual, because it's all about this security in the east, the European continent, the eastern flank of NATO. And I believe that uh, NATO needs us just as we need NATO. And I believe that this is absolutely fair. I am confident that after the war, Ukraine will be in NATO. We'll be doing everything possible to make it happen so that we would with the United States would have a same understanding and same vision. As for the cluster munitions, as you call it, uh, look, there are moments when we have uh, a slight uh, disagreements in small details with our U.S. partners, but I would like to extend words of gratitude to the president. I know it was a challenge in the United States. It was a challenge in the U.S. Congress, and there are people who are not sharing this support with regards to the cluster munitions, but I want us to take a look at this from a different perspective from a perspective of fairness, Russia constantly using cluster munitions on our territory. And they are fighting only on our land. They are killing our people. They are uh, using long-range uh, uh, missiles, cluster munitions on a regular basis. The assistance that we can receive from the United States uh, with regards to the decision on the cluster munitions, we're talking about the use of those munitions only against military targets only against the occupied territory of Ukraine. So this is uh, something that is under control and it's not going to be used anywhere else. There has to be a fairness. And, and it's not fair that the aggressor has occupied us, has been occupying parts of our territory for nine years, killing our people. How can we defend? It's all about fairness. We are defending ourselves. We are defending ourselves by not using weapons against the territory of other states. As for the other support and assistance, we do need long-range weapons. This deficit remains, and I will raise this issue. Yesterday, um, a group of NATO allies uh, established a coalition to provide the training for uh, F-16 fighter pilots from uh, Ukraine. This is an initiative uh, originally uh, initiated by uh, uh, the Netherlands and Denmark. I welcome that uh, several other allies have now joined in. 
Uh, some preparations have already taken uh, place uh, uh, and training will start as soon as possible. What allies have uh, informed us uh, is that training will actually start this, uh, this summer. So this is something which is now happening. Uh, last time I saw uh, a list, I think it was uh, uh, 10 or perhaps even a bit more uh, allies which are now part of this uh, coalition. Uh, and, uh, and they are uh, eager to start as soon as possible. And of course, this will then enable uh, a later decision also to provide F-16s. So training starts as soon as possible, and based on that, uh, decisions will be made on providing uh, fighter jets. Let me just add that, of course, uh, guarantees, documents, councils, meetings are important. But the most urgent task now is to ensure enough weapons uh, to uh, Ukraine, to President Zelensky and his ar armed forces. And therefore, it, is, it has been extremely important that uh, uh, under this meeting, uh, we have seen new announcement from NATO allies. Uh, France has decided to deliver long-range cruise missiles. Uh, Germany just announced uh, yesterday a new big package of uh, more uh, air defense systems, more uh, armored vehicles. The United States announced a big new package of ammunition of weapons, and many other allies have also made new announcements. So the most urgent task is, of course, to ensure that Ukraine prevails. Because unless Ukraine prevails, then there is no membership issue to be discussed at all. So the message is that we stand by Ukraine for as long as it takes, and the urgent need is to provide the weapons they need. Thank you very much. This concludes this press conference. The Secretary General and the President will now proceed to the inaugural meeting of the NATO Ukraine Council. Yeah? Okay.